In late 2009, when the industry was just beginning to offer so-called converged infrastructure, CI, Nutanix was skating to the puck, so to speak. Meaning, unlike converged infrastructure, which essentially bolted together compute and networking and storage into a single SKU that was very hardware centric, Nutanix was focused on creating HCI, hyper-converged infrastructure, which was a software-led architecture that unified the key elements of data center infrastructure. Now, while both approaches saved time and money, HCI took the concept to new heights of cost savings and simplicity. Hyper-converged infrastructure became a staple of private clouds, creating a cloud-like experience on-prem. As the public cloud evolved and grew, more and more customers are now taking a cloud-first approach to IT. So the challenge becomes, how do you remodel your IT house so that you can connect your on-prem workloads to the cloud to both simplify cloud migration while at the same time creating an identical experience across your states. Hello and welcome to this special program, Accelerate Hybrid Cloud with Nutanix and Microsoft, made possible by, by Nutanix and produced by theCUBE. I'm Dave Vellante, one of your hosts today. Now in this session, we'll hear how Nutanix is evolving its initial vision of simplifying infrastructure deployment and management to support modern applications by partnering with Microsoft to enable that consistent experience that we talked about earlier to extend hybrid cloud to Microsoft Azure and take advantage of cloud native tooling. Now, what's really important to stress here, and you'll hear this in our second segment, substantive engineering work has gone into this partnership a lot of partnerships are sealed with a press release. We sometimes call it a Barney deal. You know, I love you, you love me. Like Barney, the once popular children's dinosaur character. We dig into the critical engineering aspects that enable that seamless connection between on-prem infrastructure and the public cloud. Now in our first segment, Lisa Martin talks to Alvaro Solis, who is the Vice President of Global ISD Commercial Solutions at Microsoft and Michael Leschica, who is the Vice President of Business Development for the Cloud and Database Partner Ecosystem at Nutanix. Now after that, Lisa will kick it back to me in our Boston studios to speak with Eric Lockhart, who is the Corporate Vice President of Microsoft Azure Specialized, along with Thomas Cornelli, who is the Senior Vice President of Products at Nutanix, and Indu Carey, who is the Senior Vice President of of engineering for NCI and NC2 at Nutanix. And we'll dig deeper into the announcement and its salient features. Thanks for being with us. We hope you enjoy the program. Over to Lisa. Hi everyone. Welcome to our event, Accelerate Hybrid Cloud with Nutanix and Microsoft. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and I've got two great guests here with me to give you some exciting news. Please welcome Alvaro Solis, the Vice President of Global ISV Commercial Solutions at Microsoft, and Michael Leschichka, VP of Business Development Cloud and Database Partner Ecosystem at Nutanix. Guys, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining me today. Great to be here. Thank you, Lisa. Looking forward. Yeah, so Alvaro, let's go ahead and start with you. Talk to me from your lens. What are you seeing in terms of the importance of the role of the, the ISV ecosystem and really helping customers make their business outcomes successful? Oh, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation and thank you, Michael and the Nutanix team for the partnership. You know, the, the ISV ecosystem plays a critical role uh, as we support our customers and enable them in their digital transformation journeys to create value, to move at their own pace, and more importantly, to be sure that every one of them, as they transform themselves, um, have the right set of solutions for the long term uh, with high differentiation, cost effectiveness, and resiliency, especially given the times that we're living in. Yeah, that resiliency is getting more and more critical as each day goes on. Alvaro, sticking with you, we got Microsoft Ignite going on today. What are some of the key themes that we should expect this year and how do they align to Microsoft's vision and strategy? Ah, great question, thank you. When you think about it, we're going to talk about the topics that are very relevant and our customers have asked us to go deeper and, and share with them. 
One of them, as you may imagine, is how can we do more with less using Azure, especially given the current times that we're living in. The, the business context has changed so much. They have different imperative, different, different amount of pressure and priorities. How can we help? How can we combine the platform, the value that Microsoft can bring and our Microsoft ISV partner ecosystem to deliver more value and enable them to have their own journey? Actually, in that frame, if I may, we are making this announcement today with Nutanix. I mean, the Nutanix cloud clusters are often the fastest way on which customers will be able to do that journey into the cloud because it's very consistent with environments that they already know and use on premise. And once they go into the cloud, then they have all the benefit of scale, agility, resiliency, security, and cost benefits that they're looking for. So that topic and this type of announcements will be a big part of what we're doing in Ignite. Then, Exciting. Michael, let's bring you into the conversation now. Sure. Big milestone. Um, of our RDTs that the general availability of Nutanix cloud clusters on Azure. Talk to us about that from Nutanix's perspective. And also give me a little bit of color, Michael, on the partnership, the relationship. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So uh, we actually entered a partnership a couple of years ago. So we've been working on this mission for quite a while, but really our ultimate goal from day one was really to make our customers' journeys to hybrid cloud simpler and faster. So really for both companies, I think, um, our goal is really being that trusted partner for our customers in their innovation journey. And as Alvaro mentioned, you know, in the current macroeconomic conditions, really our customers really care about growing their top line, but they have to be mindful of their bottom line as well. So they're really looking to leverage their existing investments in technology skill sets and leverage the most out of them. So the things like, for example, cost of operations and keeping those things consistent across on premises and the cloud, are really important as customers are thinking about growth initiatives that they want to implement. And of course, uh, going to Azure Public Cloud is an important one as they think about flexibility, scale, and modernizing their apps. And of course, as we, as we look at the customer uh, landscape, a lot of customers have an on-prem on footprint, right? Whether that's for regulatory reasons or business or other technical reasons. So hybrid cloud has really become an ideal operating model for a lot of the customers that we see today. So really our partnership with Microsoft is critical because together I really do see our uh, us together simplifying that journey to the public cloud and making sure that it's not only easy, but secure and really seamless. And really I see our partnership um, as bringing the strengths of each company together, right? So Nutanix of course is known in the past for its hyper infrastructure and really breaking down the silos between networking, compute, storage, and simplifying that infrastructure and operations. And our customers love that for the products and our, our NPS score of 90 over the last seven years. And if you look at Azure and Microsoft, they're truly best in class cloud infrastructure with cutting edge services and innovation and really global scale. So when you think about those two combinations, right, that's really powerful for customers to be able to take their applications, uh, whether they're on-prem, in the cloud, or even at the edge, and really combining all these various hybrid scenarios. And I think that's something that's pretty unique that we're able to offer to our joint customers. Let's dig into that uniqueness of our bringing you back into the conversation. You guys are meeting customers where they are, helping them to accelerate their cloud transformations delivering that consistency, you know, whether they're on-prem uh, in Azure, in, in the cloud. Talk to me, Avaro, from Microsoft's perspective about the significance of this announcement. I understand that the, the preview was oversubscribed, so the demand from your joint customers is clear. Thank you, Lisa, Michael. Personally, I'm very proud, and at the company, we're very proud of the work that we did together with Nutanix. When you see two companies coming together, with the mission of empowering customers and with the customer at the center and trying to solve real problems, in this case, how to drive hybrid cloud and what is the best approach for them, opening more opportunities is, is, is extremely inspiring. And of course, the welcome reception that we have from customer reiterates that we're generating that value. Now, when you combine the power of Azure, that is very well known by resiliency, the scale, the performance, the elasticity, and the range of services, 
uh, with the reality of companies that might have hundreds or even thousands of different applications and data sources, those cloud journeys are very different for each and every one of them. So how do we combine our capabilities between Nutanix and Microsoft to be sure that that hybrid cloud journey that every government is gonna take uh, can be simplified. You can take away the risk, the complexity on that transformation creates tons of value. And that's what our customers are asking us today. Either because they're trying to move and modernize their environment to Azure, or they're bringing their, you know, Kubernetes, Arc enabled Kubernetes services and cluster and data services on premise to the Nutanix platform. We together can combine and solve for that adding more value for any scenario that customers may have. And this is not once and done. This is not that we build it, we forget it. It's a partnership that keeps evolving and also includes work that we do with our solution, sales, alliances, and go-to-market teams to be sure that the customers have the best service and support to make to, to create the outcomes that they're asking us to deliver. Talk to me a little bit about the customers that were in the beta. As we mentioned, Alvaro, the, the preview was oversubscribed. So as I talked about earlier, the demand is clearly there. Talk to me about some of the customers in beta. You can even anonymize them or maybe talk about them by industry. But what, what were some of the, the key things they came to these two companies looking to, to solve, get to the cloud faster, um, be able to deliver the same sets of services with familiarity so that from a, they're able to do more with less? Maybe I could take that one out of our beetle um, But yeah, so like like you like to mention, Lisa, you know, we've had a great preview, oversubscribe. We had lots of cut, not only customers, but also partners battle testing the solution. Um, and you know, we're obviously very pleased now to have GN offered to everyone else. But one of our customers, Hamburger, was really looking forward to seeing how do they leverage density two on Azure to, like I mentioned, reduce that work. Um, work with my migration and the risk for that and making sure, hey, some of the applications, maybe we are going to go and rewrite them, refactor them uh, to take them natively to Azure, but there's others where we want to lift and shift them to Azure. But like I mentioned, it's not just customers, right? We've been working with partners like PCS and Citrix, um, where they share the same goal as Microsoft and Nutanix, providing that superior customer experience, where whatever the operating model might be for that customer. So they're going to be leveraging NC2 on Azure um, to really provide those hybrid um, cloud experiences for their solutions on top of building on top of um, the, the work that we've done together. So this really kind of highlights the power of that, Alvaro, the power of the ISB ecosystem and what you're all able to do together to really help customers achieve the outcomes that they individually need. Absolutely. Look, I mean, we do strongly believe that when you partner properly with an ISV, you get to the to the magical frame where one plus one equals three or more, because you are combining superpowers and you're solving the problem on behalf of the customer so they can focus on their business. And this is a wonderful example, a very inspiring one, where when you see the risk, the complexity that all these projects normally have, and Michael did a great job framing some of them, and the difference that they have now by having NC2 on Azure, uh, it's night and day. And we are fully committed to keep driving this innovation, this partnership on service of our customers and our partner ecosystem, because at the same time, making our partners more successful, generate more value for customers and for all of us. Alvaro, can you comment a little bit on the go-to-market? Like how, how do your joint customers engage? What does that look like from their perspective? You know, when you think about the go-to-market, a lot of that is we have you know teams all over the world that will be aligned and working together in service of the customer. There's marketing and demand generation that will be done. There will be also uh, work on joint opportunities that we will manage, uh, as well as a very tight connection on projects to be sure that the support experience for customers is well aligned. I don't want to go into too much detail, but I would like to guarantee that our intent is not only to create an incredible technological experience, which the, the development teams have done, but also a great experience for the customers that are going through these projects, interacting with both teams that will work as one in service to empower the customer to achieve the outcomes that they need. Yeah, and just to comment maybe a little bit more on what Alvaro said, 
uh, you know, it's not just the, about the product integration, right? It's really the full end to end experience for our customers. So when we embarked on this partnership with Microsoft, we really thought about what is the right product integration and, um, with our engineering teams, but also how do we go and, um, talk to customers, the value prop together and all the way down through to support. So we actually even worked on, uh, how do we have a single joint support for a customer? So, uh, it doesn't really matter how the customer engages. They really see this as an end-to-end single solution across two companies. And that's so critical given just the, the natural challenges that, that organizations face and the dynamics of the macroeconomic environment that we're living in for them, for customers to be able to have that really seamless single point of interaction. They want that consistent experience on-prem to the cloud, but from an engagement perspective that you're what sounds like what you're doing Michael and Alvaro was, is, goes a long way to really giving customers um, a much more streamlined approach so that they can be laser focused on solving the business problems that they have, being competitive, getting products to market faster and all that good stuff. Michael, I wonder if you could comment on maybe the cultural alignment that Nutanix and Microsoft have. I know Microsoft's partner program has been around for decades and decades. Michael, what does that cultural alignment look like from you know, the sales and marketing folks down to engineering, down to support. Yeah, I think honestly, um, that was uh, that was something that kind of fit really well and we saw really a lot of alignment from day one. Of course, you know, Nutanix uh, cares a lot about our customer experience, not just within the products, but again, through the entire life cycle uh, to support and so forth. And Microsoft's no different, right? Um, uh, there's a huge emphasis on uh, making sure that we provide the best customer experience and that we're also focusing on solving real world customer problems, right? And really um, focusing on the biggest problems the customers have. So really culturally, it felt it felt really natural. It felt like we were a single team, although it's you know, two large organizations working together, but it really felt like a single team uh, working day in, day out on, on solving customer problems together. Yeah, well, well said, Michael. Go ahead. No, I will say, well said, Michael. I think that the, the, the one element that will complement, I think the answer was super complete, is the, the fact that we work together from the outside in, looking at it from the customer lenses, is extremely powerful and inspiring, as I mentioned, because that's what it's all about. And when you put the customer at the center, everything else falls in part uh, on its, its own place very, very quickly. And then it's hard work and innovation and, you know, doing what we do yeah. best, which is combining our superpowers in service of that customer. So that was the piece that, uh, you know, I, I, I cannot uh, emphasize enough uh, how inspiring it's been. And again, the, res- the response for the preview is a, is a great example of the opportunity that we have in there. And you've taken a lot of complexity out of the customer environment. And I can imagine that the GA of Nutanix Cloud Clusters on Azure is going to be a huge benefit for customers in every industry. Last question, guys. I want to get both your perspectives on. Michael, we'll start with you, and then Alvaro will wrap with you. What's next? Obviously, a lot of exciting stuff. What's next for the partnership of these these two superheroes together? Michael? Yeah. So I think our goal doesn't change, right? I think our North Star is to continue to make it easy for our customers to adopt migrate and modernize their applications, leveraging Nutanix and Microsoft Azure, right? And I think NC2 on Azure is just the start of that. So kind of maybe more immediate, like, you know, we mentioned obviously we have we announced the GA, that's GA in Americas, but the, kind of the next more immediate step over the next few months, look for us to continue expanding beyond Americas and making sure that we have support across all the global regions. Um, and then beyond that, you know, again, as Alvaro mentioned, it's working from kind of the clusters backwards. So we're, we're not, you know, we're not waiting for the GA. We're already working on the next set of joint solutions saying, what are other problems that customers are facing, especially across as they're running their workloads across on premises and public cloud? And what are the next set of solutions that we can deliver to the market to solve those real challenges for them? It sounds really strongly that, that the partnership here, we're talking about Nutanix and Microsoft, it's really, Nutanix and Microsoft with the customer at the center. I think you've do- both done a great job of articulating that there's laser focus there. Alvaro, last word to you. What excites you about the momentum that Microsoft and Nutanix have for the customers? Well, thank you, Lisa, Michael. I will tell you, when you hear the customer feedback on the impact that you're having, 
that's the most inspiring part because you know you're generating value. You know you're making a difference, especially in these complex times when the, the partnership gets tested, where the, the right uh, you know, relationship gets built, where being there for customers is extremely inspiring. Now, as Michael mentioned, this is all about what customer needs and how do we go even ahead of the game, being sure that we're ready not for what is the problem today, but the opportunities that we have tomorrow to keep working on this. We have a huge ta task ahead to be sure that we bring this value globally in the right way with the right quality everywhere, which is a is never a small feast, as you may imagine. You know, the, the world is a big place, uh, but also the next wave of innovations that will be customer driven to keep and, and raise the bar on how, how much more value can we unlock and how much empowerment can we make for the customer to keep innovating at their own pace in their own terms. Absolutely, that customer empowerment's key. Guys, it's been a pleasure talking to you about the announcement, Nutanix Cloud Clusters on Azure. Avara, Michael, thank you for your time, your inputs and helping us understand the impact that this powerhouse relationship is making. Thank you for having me, Lisa, and thank you, Avara, for joining me. Thank you, Lisa, Michael. It's been fantastic. I'm uh, looking forward and thank you to the audience uh, for being here with us. Yeah. Stay tuned. Exactly. Thanks to, to the audience. Exactly. And stay tuned. There's more to come. Exactly. We have coming up next a deeper conversation on the announcement with Dave Vellante and product execs from both Nutanix and Microsoft. You won't want to miss it. Okay, we're back with the Hybrid Cloud Power Panel. I'm Dave Vellante, and with me are Eric Lockhart, who's the Corporate Vice President of Microsoft Azure Specialized, Thomas Cornley, who's the Senior Vice President of Products at Nutanix, and Indu Carey, who's the Senior Vice President of Engineering, NCI and NC2 at Nutanix. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. It's great to be here. Have us. Eric, let, let's start with you. We hear so much about cloud first. What's driving the need for hybrid cloud for organizations today? I mean, why not just put everything in the public cloud? Yeah, well, I mean, the public cloud has a bunch of inherent uh, advantages, right? I mean, it's it has effectively infinite capacity, the ability to uh, you know innovate without a lot of upfront costs, you know, regions all over the world. So the, there is a, a trend towards public cloud, but you know, not everything can go to the cloud, especially right away. There's lots of reasons. Um, customers want to have assets on premise, you know, data gravity, uh, sovereignty, and so on. And so really hybrid is the way to achieve the best of both worlds, uh, really to kind of leverage the assets and investments that customers have on premise, but also take advantage of, of the cloud for bursting or regionality or expansion, uh, especially coming out of the pandemic. We saw a lot of this from work from home and, and video conferencing and so on, driving a lot of cloud adoption. So hybrid is really the way that we see customers achieving uh, the best of both worlds. Yeah, it makes sense. I want to, Thomas, if you could talk a little bit, I don't want to inundate people with the acronyms, but but the Nutanix Cloud Clusters on Azure, what is that? What problems does it solve? Uh, give us some color there, please. Yeah, Dave, so, you know, Cloud Clusters on Azure, which we actually call NC2, to make it uh, simple and easy. So NC2 on Azure is really our solutions for hybrid cloud, right? And you think about the hybrid cloud, highly desirable. Customers want it. They they know this is the right way to go for them, given that they want to have workloads on premises, at the edge, and in public clouds. But it's complicated. It's hard to do, right? And the first thing that you deal with is just silos, right? You have different infrastructure that you have to go and deal with. You have different teams, different technologies, different areas of expertise, and dealing with different portals. Networking get complicated. Security gets complicated. And so you heard me say this already, you know, hybrid can be complex. And so what we've done with NC2 on Azure is we make that simple, right? We allow teams to go and basically have a solution that allows you to go and take any application running on premises and move it as is to any Azure region where NC2 is available. Once it's running there, 
you keep the same or filling model, right? And that's something that's actually super valuable to actually go and do this in a simple fashion, do it faster, and basically do hybrid in a more cost-effective fashion, you know, for all your applications. And that's really what's really special about NC2 and Azure today. So Thomas, just a quick follow-up on that. So you're, you're, if I understand you correctly, it's an identical experience. Did I get that right? This is, this is the key for us, right? Is when you think you're setting on-premises, you're used to a way of doing things, of how you run your applications, how you operate, how you protect them. And what we do here is we extend the Nutanix operating model to workloads running in Azure using the same core stack that you're running on-premises, right? So once you have a cluster deployed in NC2 on Azure, it's going to look like the same cluster that you might be running at the edge or in your own data center, using the same tools, using the same admin constructs to go and protect the workloads, make them highly available, do disaster recovery, or secure them. All of that becomes the same. But now you're in Azure, and this is what we've spent a lot of time working with Eric and his teams on, is you actually have access now to all of the suite of Azure services natively from those workloads. So now you get the best of both worlds. You know, and we bridge them together, and you get seamless access of those services between what you get from Nutanix, what you get from Azure. Yeah, and as you alluded to, this has traditionally been non-trivial and people have been looking forward to this for, for quite some time. So Indu, I want to understand from an engineering perspective, your team had to work with the Microsoft team and I'm sure there was, this, this is not just a press release this is, this, this, or a PowerPoint. You had to do some, some engineering work. So what specific engineering work did you guys do and what's unique about this relative to other solutions in the marketplace? So let me start with uh, what's unique about this. And I think Thomas and Eric both did a really good job of describing that. The best way to think about what we're delivering jointly with Microsoft is that it speeds up the journey to the public cloud. You know, one way to think about this is uh, moving to the public cloud is sort of like remodeling your house. And when you start remodeling your house, you know, you find that you start with something and before you know it, you're trying to remodel the entire house. And that's a little bit like what journey to the public cloud sort of starts to look like when you start to refactor your applications, because it wasn't, most of the applications out there today weren't designed for the public cloud to begin with. NC2 allows you to flip that on its head and say that take your application as is, and then lift and shift it to the public cloud, at which point you start the refactoring journey. And one of the things that you have done really well with the NC2 on Azure is that NC2 is not something that sits by Azure side. It's fully integrated into the Azure fabric, especially the software-defined networking SDN piece. What that means is that you, know, you don't have to worry about connecting your NC2 cluster to Azure to some sort of a network pipe. You have direct access to the Azure services from the same application that's now running on an NC2 cluster. And that makes your refactoring journey so much easier. Your management plane looks the same. Your um, high performance nodes, like the NVMe nodes, they look the same. Um, and really, I mean, other than the fact that you're doing something in the public cloud, all the Nutanix goodness that you're used to continue to receive that. Um, there is a lot of secret sauce that we have had to develop as part of this journey. But if I had to pick one that really stands out, it is how do we take the complexity, the network complexity of a public cloud, in this case, Azure, and make it as familiar to Nutanix customers as the VPC construct, the virtual uh, private cloud construct, that allows them to really think of their on-prem uh, networking and the public cloud networking in very similar terms. There's a lot more that's gone on behind the scenes. And by the way, I'll tell you a funny a sort of anecdote. My dad used to say, uh, when I grew up that, um, you know, if you really want to grow up, you have to do two things. You have to like build a house and you have to marry your kid um, off to someone. And I would say, I would add a third, do a co-development with the public cloud provider or with a partner. <laughs> this has been just an absolute amazing journey with Eric and the Microsoft team. And you're very grateful for their support. I need NC2 for my house. I live in a house that was built in 1687 and we connect old and new and it's, 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 it is a bolt on. But, 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 and so, but, but the secret sauce, I mean, there's, there's a lot there, but is it a PaaS layer? I mean, you didn't just wrap it in a container and shove it into the public cloud. You've done more than that, I'm inferring. You know, the, it's actually an infrastructure layer offering on top of which you can obviously run various types of platform services. So for example, 
down the road, if you have a containerized application, you'll actually be able to take it from on-prem and run it on uh, NC2. But the NC2 offer itself, the NC2 offering itself is an infrastructure level offering. And the trick is that the storage that you're used to, the high performance storage that you know define Nutanix to begin with, the hypervisor that you're used to, the network constructs that you're used to light like micro segmentation for security purposes, all of them are available to you on NC2 in Azure, the same way that you're used to do on-prem. And furthermore, managing all of that through Prism, which is our management interface and management console, also remains the same. Um, that makes your security model easier, that makes your management challenge easier, that makes it much easier for an application person or the IT office to be able to report back to the board that they have started to execute on the cloud mandate, and they've done that uh, much faster than they'd be able to otherwise. Great, thank you for helping us understand the plumbing. So now, Thomas, maybe we can get to like, the customers. What, what are you seeing? What are the use cases that are, that are going to emerge for this solution? Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we've had a solution for a while. You know, this is now new on Azure. It's going to extend the reach of the solution and get us closer to the type of use cases that are unique to Azure in terms of you know, solutions for analytics and so forth. But the kind of key use cases for us, the first one, you know, Edu talked about it, is migration. You know, we see customers on their cloud journey. They're looking to go and move applications wholesale from on-premises to public cloud. You know, we make this very easy because in the end, they take the same console that were around the application and make them, we make them available now in the Azure region. You can do this for any applications. There's no change to the application, no networking change. The same IP config will work the same whether you're running on-premises or in Azure. The app stays exactly the same, managed the same way, protected the same way. So that's a big one. And you know, the type of drivers for me to public cloud, maybe I want to go do something different, or I want to go and shut down a location on premises. I need to do that with a given timeline. I can now move first and then take care of optimizing the application to take advantage of all that Azure has to offer. So migration and doing that in a simple fashion, in a very fast manner, is, is a key use case. Another one. And this is classic for leveraging public cloud for what you're doing on premises is disaster recovery. And something that we refer to as elastic disaster recovery. Being able to go and actually configure a secondary site to protect your on premises workloads, but having that site sitting in Azure as a small site, just enough to hold the data that you're replicating, and then use the fact that you cannot get access to resources on demand in Azure to scale out the environment, fade over workloads, run them with performance potentially fit them back to on-premises and then shrink back the environment in Azure to again, optimize cost and take advantage of the elasticity that you get from public cloud models. And then the last one, building on top of that, is just the fact that you cannot get bursting use cases. And maybe running a large environment, typically desktop, you know, VDI environments that we see running on-premises. And I have, you know, a seasonal requirement to go and actually enable more workers to go get access to the same solution. You could do this by sizing for the large burst capacity on premises, wasting resources during the rest of the year. What we see customers do is optimize what they're running on premises and get access to resources on demand in Azure and basically move the workloads and now basically get combined desktops running on premises, desktops running on NC2 on Azure, same desktop images, same management, same services, and do that as a burst use case during, say, your retailer that has to go and take care of a holiday season. You know, great use case that we see over and over again for our customers, right? And very much complementing the notion of, look, I want to go to desktop as a service, but right now I don't want to refactor the entire application stack. I just want to be able to get access to resources on demand in the right place at the right time. Makes sense. I mean, this is really all about supporting customers' digital transformations. We all talk about how that was accelerated during the pandemic, and but the cloud is a fundamental component of the digital transformations. And Eric, you, you guys have obviously made a commitment between Microsoft and, and Nutanix to simplify hybrid cloud and that journey to the cloud. How should customers you know, measure that? What does success look like? What's the ultimate vision here? Well, the ultimate vision is really twofold, I think. The one is to, you know, first is really to ease a customer's journey to the cloud, to allow them to take advantage of all the benefits of the cloud, but to do so without having to rewrite their applications or retrain 
uh, their their administrators and or or to obviate their investment that they already have in platforms like like Nutanix. And so the the work the companies have done together here, you know, first and foremost is really to allow folks to come to the cloud in the way uh, that they want to come to the cloud and take really the best of both worlds, right? Leverage leverage their investment in the capabilities of the Nutanix platform, but do so. Uh, in conjunction with the advantages and, and um, capabilities of, of Azure. You know, secondly, it's really to extend some of the cloud capabilities uh, down onto the on-premise infrastructure. And so with investments that we've done together with Azure Arc, uh, for example, we're really extending the Azure control plane down onto on-premise Nutanix uh, clusters and bringing the capabilities that that uh, provides to the, the Nutanix customer, as well as uh, various Azure services like our data services and Azure SQL server. So um, it's really a, a kind of coming at the problem from, from two directions. One is from kind of traditional on-premise up into the cloud, and then the second is kind of from the cloud, leveraging the investment customers have in, in on-premise HCI. Got it, thank you. Okay, last question. Maybe each of you could just give us one key takeaway uh, for our audience today. Maybe we start with, 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 with Thomas and then Indu and then Eric, you can bring us home. Sure. So the key takeaway is, you know, Nutanix Cloud Clusters on Azure is now GA. You know, this is something that we've had tremendous demand from our customers, both from the Microsoft side and the Nutanix side, going, going back years, literally, right? People have been wanting to go and see this. This is now live GA open for business. And you know we're ready to go and engage and ready to scale. Right? This is our first step in a long journey in a very key partnership for us at Nutanix. Great, Indu. You know, Dave, in a prior life, about seven or eight, uh, eight years ago, I was uh, part of a team that took a popular tax preparation software and moved it to the public cloud. And that was a journey that took us four years and probably several hundred million dollars. And if we had had NC2 then, it would have saved us half the money, but more importantly, would have gotten there in one third the time. And that's really the value of this. Okay, Eric, bring us home, please. Yeah, I'll just point out that this is not something that's just bolt on or something we, we, we started yesterday. This is something the teams, both companies have been working on together for, for years, really. And it's, it's a way of, of deeply integrating Nutanix uh, into the Azure cloud. And with the ultimate goal of, of, again, providing cloud capabilities to the Nutanix customer in a way that they can you know, uh, take advantage of the cloud and then complement those applications over time with additional uh, Azure services like storage, for example. So it really is a, a, a great on-ramp to the cloud for, for customers who have significant investments in, in Nutanix clusters on-premise. Love the co-engineering and the ability to take advantage of those cloud native tools and capabilities, real customer value. Thanks gentlemen, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, keep it right there. You're watching Accelerate Hybrid Cloud, that journey with Nutanix and Microsoft technology. On theCUBE, your leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage. Organizations are increasingly moving towards a hybrid cloud model that contains a mix of on-premises, public, and private clouds. A recent study confirms 83% of businesses agree that hybrid multi-cloud is the ideal operating model. Despite its many benefits, deploying a hybrid cloud can be challenging complex, slow, and expensive, require different skills and tool sets, and separate siloed management interfaces. In fact, 87% of surveyed enterprises believe that multi-cloud success will require simplified management of mixed infrastructures. With Nutanix and Microsoft, your hybrid cloud gets the best of both worlds. The predictable costs, performance, control, and data sovereignty of a private cloud and the scalability, cloud services, ease of use, and fractional economics of the public cloud. Whatever your use case, Nutanix Cloud Clusters simplifies IT operations, is faster, and lowers risk for migration projects, lowers cloud TCO and provides investment optimization, and offers effortless, limitless scale and flexibility. Choose NC2 to accelerate your business in the cloud and achieve true hybrid cloud success. Take a free self-guided 30-minute test drive of the solutions provisioning steps 
and use cases at Nutanix.com slash Azure TD. Okay, so we're just wrapping up Accelerate Hybrid Cloud with Nutanix and Microsoft, made possible by Nutanix, where we just heard how Nutanix is partnering with cloud and software leader Microsoft to enable customers to execute on a true hybrid cloud vision with actionable solutions. We pushed and got the answer that with NC2 on Azure, you get the same stack, the same performance, the same networking, the same automation, the same workflows across on-prem and Azure Estates, realizing the goal of simplifying and extending on-prem workloads to any Azure region to move apps without complicated refactoring and to be able to tap the full complement of native services that are available on Azure. Remember, all these videos are available on demand at thecube.net, and you can check out siliconangle.com for all the news related to this announcement and all things enterprise tech. Please go to Nutanix.com. There's of course information about this announcement and the partnership, but there's also a ton of resources to better understand the Nutanix product portfolio. There are white papers, videos, and other valuable content. So check that out. This is Dave Vellante for Lisa Martin with theCUBE, your leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage. Thanks for watching the program, and we'll see you next time.